The Panasonic Lumix S5 has been my main camera for all of 2022, for wedding films, for client projects, and even music videos. So today I wanted to show you my overkill handheld cinema rig for the Lumix S5. Obviously, as you could tell, it's all built up, but I wanted to break it down and go through all of the components with you bit by bit and kind of explain why I chose what I chose for this rig and why this rig is necessary for film production. So let's get started. So what do we have here? Well, if you watched my Blackmagic 4K cinema rig setup, it's kind of the same, except for I have a few new things that we'll go over when we get started. So the cage I'm using for the Lumix S5 is the Small Rig Black Mamba cage. It's their, well, I believe it's their newest cage in their cage lineup. Um, I have both the older version that's currently on the Lumix filming with me right now and this version. I do prefer the newest version. I find that it feels better. It's grippier. All around it's just, I find a tighter cage. It's a little smaller in its form factor and I think that it's a win-win overall. And the cool thing about the Black Mamba cage is that it came with this really nice top handle and it has a little rubber grip on the inside, which again, just feels nice and cozy. There you have it. So next we'll be applying the monitor to the handle. What I have here is a small rig monitor mount. Actually this specific one is discontinued, but one exactly like it is called the small rig swivel and tilt adjustable monitor mount RV style according to B&H. So these mounts are great because once they're on, they're on and they're not going anywhere. And the next is the Atomos Shinobi. This monitor uh, was recommended to me by a friend and honestly, I swear by this monitor, it is amazing, nice and bright. So if you're in, if you're outside, super bright locations, um, <laughs> you should be pretty good with this monitor. So up next, since, since uh, if I put the battery on, it's gonna just tilt over, we're gonna go with our lens solution. So the lens I'll be using is of course the Sigma 18 to 35. Oh, what else am I gonna use? <laughs> Seriously, since it's an EF mount, we'll be using an adapter. So this is the Sigma MC21 adapter. One thing to know is that this is not an autofocus adapter. You can catch your uh, focus with the single autofocus mode, but it is not a consistent autofocus system. So anyway, here's the adapter and we're just gonna toss the lens inside of it. One thing to note also is that the adapter doesn't have a glass inside of it, so you're, um, sensor is going to be exposed. Sweet. So we have our lens, we have our adapter. Uh, I forgot to mention that I'm using a, just a, a focus gear. You can buy these um, gears anywhere. It usually comes with your follow focusing system and I cut it in a way that fits my lens perfectly. And so there's no access rubber. So the next step we're going to do before we get too carried away is that we're going to apply our rail mount. So again, small rig. They can't really go wrong with small rig. They have everything you need. And then attached to your plate, you could just add whatever um, tripod mounting solution you need. So right here, I just have this little tripod mount that will just barely fit on. So it's not ideal. It just came with one of my tripods. I won't even bother mentioning the name. Awesome. So now we're going to counterweight it with the battery. And so again, like the Black Magic video, I'm using this Moman 99 uh, battery power bank still, 14.4 um, volts. This V-mount battery, I have had no issues with it. I've used it all year uh, with for multiple gigs. And as far as I'm concerned, it's still just as powerful as it was when I first bought it. So again, totally recommend it. And we have our small rig uh, V-mount plate, pretty standard. You can find this one really anywhere. There's so many different plates. This one I like, but I'm sure there's better ones out there. So you're gonna notice that I am actually trapping the um, the monitor 
fold it in. And that is because that the camera itself makes it pretty dang easy to control, even if you don't have the touch controls. And I, I don't like when the monitor is exposed to the elements. I find it, you know, it just scares me. Uh, so I, I just keep it in and control everything through the buttons. If I need any menus, I just click the menu. Honestly, the touch screen is kind of an afterthought to me. We are just going to do all the connections now because as soon as you put this handle on, which I'll talk about the handle next, it is hard to get the HDMI in. It's hard to get the USB-C in to power it. So let's do that now. You'll notice that when you power your, your camera with an external uh, V-mount, your camera will notify you that you should probably unplug the battery. You shouldn't be charging it while using it. I have just ignored that and have used it regardless and I've had no issues. So I'll update you if I ever do have issues. The next thing uh, we'll talk about is the side handle here. I'm not going in any specific order. And I'm using, again, small rig wood side handle. I have it placed on the um, right side of my camera. I find it just is easier. It's already like a, a handle here um, that I could easily use. So I might as well just put the extra handle here for extra stability. So now that I have the handle on, I'll be applying the microphone. The microphone that I use um, is called the Deity V-Mic D4 Mini. It's a super ultra compact microphone. It is tiny, but the quality that comes out of this thing, or I guess goes into it, is really nice, I find, and it, it makes for some pretty decent scratch audio. Um, of course, I'd always recommend to get something a little bigger. I just don't have one right now. And we have our small rig focus wheel here. We're gonna just apply that. So the next thing I'll be using is this Tilta MB215 mini clamp mat box. The mat boxes are great for a lot of things. You can obviously slide in your filters, uh, but I use it mainly for outdoor shoots where you get some unwanted sun pollution. I don't have any filters that go in here. This is just for strictly the sun. And how I attach this is a little, it's a little weird. <laughs> so I'll step you through it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the lens mount for the matte box and put in my filters. So this fil the filter I'm using right now is the uh, Tiffin Black Pro Mist 1 8th. The 1 4th is actually my favorite. I like the haze. I like how stylistic it looks. It's not for everybody. And that's why I tend for client projects to lean towards the 1 8th. So it gives me that nice pro misty goodness, but at the same time, it's not too much. So I'm gonna put this in the, um, the adapter first, and we're just gonna do just snug enough so it's in there and it won't twist out, but not too snug where you won't be able to get it back out again, because getting it in is a little awkward. And you might need to get some pliers to get it out again if you are too tight. So the next thing here is uh, my variable ND filter. I love my free well filters. I have the two to five stop, then I have the six to nine. I don't really use the six to nine unless I'm shooting at like 2 p.m. in the summer with an F1.4. Um, the, the, the two to five is perfect for pretty much every occasion. Now we're gonna put the matte box on. Not only does it look cool, I really love how it does kind of eliminate some of the unwanted um, sun, <laughs> I guess. So next is just our battery here. Uh, I know a lot of people tend to power their monitors with the battery. I don't have the mount for that yet. So I just tend to use just a uh, NPF 960. And I just click this in and it usually lasts a few hours, pretty much most of a, a wedding shoot per se. Okay, and there you have it, the S5 Cinema Rig. I find these rigs are great because it adds weight to the camera and that paired with the internal stabilization just adds for such a nice smooth uh, image. So I'm making this video because my latest wedding film, I shot the whole thing handheld. Um, and ever since then, I, I've been wanting to do more handheld stuff because I really liked how raw the, the image looked, how documentary-esque the film turned out. And it just felt so freeing to go handheld versus the Ronin. Of course, there are benefits to both. I just find handhelds, there's just more flexibility there. Another thing you could probably add is an easy rig to take the weight off because this does get a little cumbersome. But in all honesty, I, I truly love this setup here. The Sigma 18-35 to is a lens I've been kind of neglecting 
through the better part of the year. And when I filmed that wedding film, I used the Sigma 18 to 35 since I knew I was doing handheld and I didn't need to rely on any autofocus. And it, the image that came out of it, I just missed it so much. It, it was so smooth looking. It was so, I guess, creamy. The bokeh, super nice, f1.8, you can't go wrong. So yeah, that is my S5 Cinema Rig. I truly hope you enjoyed the video and I'm really excited to see what Lumix has to offer in their presentation tomorrow, my tomorrow. This could be a year ago for you. Hopefully I'll catch you in the next one. I hope you enjoyed my video and until then, bye.